Hey fellow explorers, I'm at LAX today for an early morning flight and what I'm going to be doing is going here from the International Terminal to Terminal 7. By the way, I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what I can see and most people don't actually realize that you can walk from all these terminals because the way you walk through it is through a bunch of hidden bridges and tunnels and yes, they've got small signs to direct you there so it's not like I'm going to be breaking any security rules but uh, they are hard to find and I do this walk a lot because I fly United and United is out of Terminal 7 but I really like to go to the American Express Centurion Lounge which is here in the International Terminal. You can see Centurion Lounge right there. So I just finished my breakfast at the Centurion Lounge and now I'm going to catch my United flight out of Terminal 76A. So we're going to take the walk to see the airport as we go. Right here in the International Terminal there's a little doggy relief area so if you've got a pet with you and they need to go they can go outside oh and I just point out right here if you're going to the Centurion Lounge that's the entrance to it right there I like to come in to security through the International Terminal uh, and if you have a boarding pass that is not for this terminal like me uh, mine's for Terminal 7 the people will kind of be like hey what brings you here why do you want to come into this terminal and in my case, I just say I want to go to the lounge, and they're like, "All right, come on in." Uh, but uh, you know, don't just don't just like look at them strangely as to why you want to be here. You of course <coughs> want to visit one of the lounges too. So as we look out here to the left, this is the security screening area in the international terminal. Lots of lanes because lots of flights go out here, and then just down this way, that is the departures area for the international terminal. Not too busy here at seven in the morning, but if you're here around 10 p.m., that's actually probably when it's busiest because most of the flights to Asia depart out of the international terminal. I say most of the flights to Asia. Here, we're gonna take a look at this again too, because uh, I think it's just kind of a neat view down there. There used to be windows over that way, but they're building the people mover or the train through LAX that'll take you to the LA Metro or to the economy parking garage. And so I don't know if those windows are gonna return. Uh, and then if we look out this way, we can see the areas where the American Airlines flights park. <clears throat> some parked at the International Terminal, some parked over at Terminal 4. And uh, you know, these bridges, this bridge particular, this is kind of like the nicest one. This is what connects the International Terminal to Terminal 4, the home to American Airlines. But some of the tunnels can be a little bit sketchy. Like the first time I went down these things, I was like, am I supposed to be here? When we look out this way, we can see the famous LAX horseshoe. This is the ring road that goes around the airport. There's two levels. The top level is for departures and the bottom level is for arrivals. There are also a bunch of parking garages uh, in the center. The parking garages they're like, if you roll up on the day of, they can be quite expensive. They can be $50 for self-parking, $75 for valet parking. But if you book online, you can actually get them as little as like $30 or $35 a day. So that's your pro parking tip. They've got these little moving walkways. They'll be walk down here. Of course, that first one I walked on wasn't actually working, <laughs> but this one is. So that's good. And then up here, you can see the signs for the different terminals. Terminal four, five, six, seven, this way. And where baggage claim is, note that like each of the terminals has its own baggage claim area. Uh, oh, I should point this out. So you should make sure you're in the right baggage claim area. If you're coming into the international terminal and connecting to another airline or vice versa, there are a bunch of self check-in kiosks right here on this bridge that you could pick up your boarding pass for your onward flight. You don't necessarily have to go out of security to get your boarding pass if you can get it right there. And uh, there's even these kind of departure monitors. You do need to be careful when you're looking at these in the different terminals because in certain terminals, they might just show the ones for that terminal. The ones here on this bridge show them for terminals four through eight, but you notice there's no um, flights from terminals one uh, through three because uh, they figure you you can't get here from this side. Although you can, there's a bus connection you can take from the International Terminal over to those. Uh, there was a billboard for the Los Angeles Zoo, 
which if you're looking to go to a zoo and you're in Los Angeles, uh, that is certainly one. Um, oh, and here's another pet area. See, here we go. This sign says pet area. What's this pet area look like inside? This pet area has, it's dark. It's got a little grassy thing inside, a dog way station and a sink. So uh, maybe you'd go in there on like a rainy day or something like that. <clears throat> I don't know. The other one uh, definitely is better, but a longer walk if you're coming from Terminal 4. So back on the note of zoos, the Los Angeles Zoo, you know, it's a zoo. It's in Griffith Park um, and uh, it's okay. But if you really like zoos and you've got a bit of time in the region, I would encourage you to go to the San Diego Zoo, two hours to the south in San Diego driving, uh, but way better than the LA Zoo. Both of them, LA Zoo and San Diego Zoo, have free parking, which is pretty nice. If you are going to Griffith Park, the observatory is pretty neat. Uh, that's probably like the one thing that's one of those like must visits in Los Angeles. They have an original Tesla coil there. Yes, yeah, not Tesla, Tesla car, but Tesla coil. Oh, these vending machines used to sell bottled water in plastic bottles. Now, Aquafina bottled water in aluminum cans because just recently LAX banned water sold in plastic bottles. So now you can only get water in aluminum cans or boxes. Or just bring your bottle of water along with you. Okay, so now here we are in Terminal 4. This right here is the security screening area. And then as we're going to walk down this way and this escalator that we're going to get down here, this is the one that's going to bring us to Terminal 5, one of those hidden tunnels with a big red arrow. But uh, there's a lot of these, like even how you get out of this terminal, normally in most airports, you think you exit the same way you came in through security. Not here. The exit out of this Terminal 4 is like in the middle where this gigantic sign that says, exit to curbside is because if you're trying to go out the side with security they'll look at you and go hey you're going the wrong way this is the american airlines flagship lounge and admiral's club which is really quite nice uh, they are right up there and they've got neat views kind of down here into this terminal i like all the american flags up there if you get up there that's a neat picture to take down back into the terminal we're just passing Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza and Grill, passing Hudson Booksellers. And you'll notice that it's, it's narrow here and it's busy, which is what most of LAX feels like outside of the International Terminal. The International Terminal is the, well, newest. They like did a significant remodel on the International Terminal over the past few years where they've like, significantly widened it, made it bigger, added a ton of new gates. Uh, and so it really is kind of like a different experience at LAX, whether you're flying international or you're flying domestic. If you're flying domestic, you're gonna be in long lines for food. You're gonna be uh, not having any place to sit. And uh, over in the international terminal, that's where all the good lounges are. That's why I end up there. Hey. Uh, that escalator is broken. So if you're coming up this, well, you're going to be dragging your suitcase up that staircase. Such is the classic LAX experience. This is a video for the new people mover train that they're building. Coming to LAX real soon now. It's been coming to LAX real soon now for about the past decade. So here we go. We descend into the underground and you can take a bus transfer to some of the American Airlines bus gates. And then, oh, going down, there's an escalator going up, but only a staircase going down. So if you've got a suitcase, well, you're going to pick it up and carry it going down this way. Hooray, hooray. And as I go down here, the temperature increases about 10 degrees. I feel like it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit down here. Uh, quite humid. These signs just for American Airlines flights and uh, here we go into the fabulous underground of Los Angeles International Airport. Does this look like a place you should really be walking? And you'll go and say, well, Chris, it's, it's under construction. That's why it looks like this. 
It's looked like this for a very long time. Uh, this one looks nicer. They've painted some blue paint and put some bright lights up here in this hallway. They have some facts about um, aviation. So on this side, it like starts in the 1800s to tell you that the first airships like blimps took the sky. The one on the right we just passed says uh, the first planes operated by biofuel were in 2011. 2003, in-flight Wi-Fi was introduced. 1914, commercial flights begin for $5 one way. That's a pretty good deal. And uh, what are we underneath here? We are underneath the taxiway between Terminal 4 and Terminal 5. So above us are a whole bunch of airplanes that park between there. And I don't think these tunnels were ever intended for passengers to go through. I think these tunnels were likely intended to be service tunnels. And then we had 9-11 come along and 9-11 said, well, everybody who goes to the plane needs to go through security. And then LAX needed to figure out how can people actually move across the airport and not have to go outside of security. So that's where the um, access to these tunnels began. And I guess they just decided it was easier to keep them however they were, maybe with a little bit of paint and a little bit of lights rather than build new ones or bigger ones or wider ones. Because if you go over to the international side where they built the new second international terminal, significantly bigger. Okay, if you're going straight to terminal six and seven, you can go that way. Uh, but if you're going to terminal five, you can come up this way. So we're gonna come up this way since we're doing this as an interesting walk. We'll take a look a little bit at terminal five and then we'll hop back down in the uh, underground to take us to terminal six and terminal seven. What have I got? 15 minutes to fly flight, flight board. So this video is not gonna be more than 15 minutes long. Longer, for more than 15 minutes longer. Here we have a little branch of Farmer's Market at 3rd and Fairfax. The Farmer's Market at 3rd and Fairfax is like a Los Angeles institution. Um, it's, I mean, I guess it's kind of a farmer's market, but now really maybe more of a food court. So in here, you'll find uh, the Farmer's Market Cafe. Uh, you'll find some to-go food and you can do self-checkout and more canned water right there. There's a duty-free shop up here. Uh, there's another Admiral's Club. And uh, what I wanna point out here before I go back down to the underground is probably my favorite place to eat in the airport that isn't a lounge is Lemonade. Lemonade LA, because it started in LA, they say Lemonade LA afterwards, but this place that says Lemonade on it, they call themselves kind of like a modern take on a cafeteria or healthy comfort food, uh, but they have like pretty tasty, um, healthy food. Hey, there we go. Friendly people that work at Lemonade LA. Uh, it's breakfast time, so they got like oatmeal and muffins and that sort of stuff, but definitely uh, check this one out if you're looking for some actually delicious and not just fast food. All right, uh, we're going to head back into the tunnel, back down that escalator, and here is where you can see your sign that says, hey, if you're going to Terminal 4, 6, 7, 8, and B, Tom Bradley, you'll go this way. Sometimes signs call it the International Terminal. Sometimes signs call it T-Bit, Tom Bradley International Terminal. Other signs call it Terminal B. Uh, and then sometimes you'll see signs for Terminal 8. Other times you won't. Sometimes they just call it Terminal 7. It's really pretty inconsistent in this airport. I think due to the fact that like the different terminals appear to be operated like by different airlines. I think in like Terminal 7s and 8, you know, it was like, United Airlines that put their money in to refurbish it. I don't know that completely, but for like a fact, but that's what it would appear to be. Uh, it's often that way in a lot of airports in the US where like different airlines are in different terminals and then uh, they. Uh, it's here! 
someone telling their friends they went the wrong way. All right, so this is where we're walking. All right, so we started here at the International Terminal. We went through the Terminal 4 connector. We went through this tunnel. We're gonna go through the next tunnel over to Terminal 6 and then the bridge to Terminal 7. There's one more bridge that would take you to Terminal 8. I'm not going that way. You're gonna have to go that way uh, yourself. All right, so uh, here, it's actually nice and air conditioned. Ooh, I could use some air conditioning because if you just take a look at me, you know, I, it's quite warm down here. All right, we're not here to look at me, we're here to look at these tunnels. Uh, okay, terminal six and seven goes that way. And uh, that way rolls out to terminal five baggage claim. All right, does this tunnel look a lot like the last tunnel? Yeah, it looks a lot like the left tunnel. Could you easily get confused and make the wrong turn because they all look the same? You could, but make sure you're just like closely following the arrows and going to the right place. Um, you know, if you don't allocate enough time for yourself to connect between flights, like if you have an arrival in the International Terminal on Hawaiian Airlines and then you're connecting to United Airlines in Terminal 7 or 8, this is a good, you know, I, well, you'll see how long I'm taking on this walk, but I would say it's a good 30 minutes at a reasonable pace. I'm probably walking a little faster than a reasonable pace because I actually want to get to my flight on time. Actually, I usually like to be one of those persons that's like the first to board. Why? So that I get my suitcase in the overhead right over my seat. I'm one of those people. But don't worry, I'm not one of the gate lice that hangs around the gate. I give the people that are actually first to board the space to board and then when they call boarding group one, then yours truly heads on. Assuming I'm in boarding group one, but on United today, that is indeed my boarding group. But you know, there's definitely that big joke about uh, boarding group one you know, there's like 12 groups that often board before group one. And you'll see in these tunnels a lot of people running because uh, short connection, they underestimated how long it is to get to their next flight. So after watching this, if you're making that connection, hopefully you'll be like, ah, Chris prepared me. I, uh, I don't have to run to my next flight. I saw a uh, Southwest Airlines flight attendant booking and like running like marathon running speed a little bit earlier okay we are now in the things under terminal six and this would take you out terminal six baggage claim don't go that way if you're continuing on you go up this escalator because if you go up that if you go that way you end outside security which is Really what happens to most people at LAX, they get off their plane, they follow the signs to exit, they end up on the curb, and then they have to go back through security again. There are like so many wrong ways that you can go to do that, and only one right way to be the mouse, to follow the cheese, to get where you're going. All right, it is, it is warm in this terminal. Ah catching my breath as I go up this escalator. Sometimes people say, Chris, you seem out of breath. You know, well, if you were humping a huge backpack full of cameras and laptops, and things like that, you might be <laughs> out of breath too. California Pizza Kitchen, Earth Bar, a lot of neat eateries that are right around here. This terminal, Terminal 6, was recently remodeled. Alaska Airlines flies a lot of flights out of here. The Alaska Airlines, lounge is here and I think the Air Canada lounge is here too but it might have been in Terminal 5. If you're Star Alliance like you're United and you're a Star Alliance Gold member uh, you can access the Air Canada lounge. Maybe Air Canada is in Terminal 5. I don't know uh, but uh, there's another pet relief area right here. There's another outdoor one. Those little doggies are having a good time though they let you know it is just for doggy relief and no smoking or vaping. As we look at the departures uh, monitor here, flight just for Terminal 6, and there's mostly Alaska and Air Canada flights on that chart. All right, over here is the kitchen by Wolfgang Puck, sort of a Wolfgang Puck counter service spot. Uh, decent food, if you're here in Terminal 6, that's where I would eat. 
nice skylights up here. So this terminal is like one of the brighter ones because there's more windows, but it's still just as narrow. If you're looking for souvenir to bring back home, if you're not from the US, pick up some C's candy, classic American um, chocolatier. I wouldn't call it a gourmet chocolatier, but classic. This is security coming into Terminal 6. Oh, and if you're leaving this airport, you're going out to LA, and you want to take a taxi or an Uber, you got to go to this parking lot called LA Exit, uh, which the Uber and taxis don't pick up at the curb. You got to take a shuttle to where they do that. Okay, this escalator would take you down to Terminal 6 baggage claim, but we follow this little sign over here that says Terminal 7 and 8 United Connecting Flights to take us over this uh, woefully, inadequately air-conditioned bridge. This is a spot that a lot of people often come to like sleep um, because it's pretty quiet here. And uh, we'll see maybe a couple in the middle. Uh, right here, this is the LAX theme building. This used to be a restaurant, now it's nothing. Uh, but the bridge is in back. That's the new people mover train that they're building between the terminals, the metro, and the parking garages. All right, and I say to sleep. A lot of people come here because there's a few power outlets too. If you need to charge your phone, you'll find a few power outlets on these pillars. And uh, quiet spot here, just kind of a little hum of the air conditioner. But because of all the windows in this bridge, it gets pretty hot. If we look out this way, you can see the Alaska Airlines planes on that side. And then you can see the United planes over on that side. And then just out this way, might be a little too bright based on where I'm standing, but that's gonna be one of the people mover stations sort of going to go down the middle of the airport. When that's done, that'll also take you to the uh, new consolidated rental car center. Ooh, all right, well, you know, I am just about ready to get to my flight and sit down, probably stopping by the restroom to towel off a little bit because it is hot in this airport. You know, I was recently in Singapore and the Singapore airport, while well, Singapore is like fiendishly hot outside, they actually air condition their airport quite well, which is nice. I can appreciate it. I do not overheat in Singapore's airport. And uh, now we are here in Terminal 7 and Terminal 8, but sometimes just labeled Terminal 7. But this is where you see the 70 gates and the 80 gates. If you're going to the 80 gates, you keep going straight. Um, oh, here, let's take a look down these windows. Uh, this United Terminal recently remodeled. So really, actually, another one of the nicer ones. It kind of feels like the International Terminal over here. United has definitely decided this is going to be a big hub for them. If we look this way, this is the ticketing check-in area for United. And then this right over here is the security area but we'll see that better as we come from the other side. If you're going up to the United Club, the United Club Airline Lounge is right through here and up that escalator, you check in downstairs and then you go up. They open at 4.30 in the morning, pretty early for those early morning flights. Uh, if you're flying United, you need to have membership to go in or be at least Star Alliance Gold and be traveling on a international journey uh, with United. If you're Star Alliance Gold with a partner airline, then you can get in there. Uh, but if United, then only on Star Alliance Gold and international flights. All right, you can see the busy security area down there. Lots of people coming through this morning to go wherever they're gonna go. United has two lounges. That's the United Club and then the Polaris Lounge. So if you're flying Polaris International Business Class, uh, then you can go to the Polaris Lounge over here and you can see this terminal a lot wider than the previous ones we went through, but, uh, but busy. Boy, this is a buzzing hive of energy. There's a drinking fountain with a water bottle filler over there. So long line. Uh, 
if you want some coffee, there's Clatch Coffee. But boy, at uh, 7 a.m., Clatch Coffee has a long line of people wanting to get their cafe, cafe, caffeine fix. I generally try to uh, get my eat or breakfast on before I get here, or as I did this morning, stop over the International Terminal, I've got time to the American Express Centurion Lounge. All right, well, my gate is just up ahead, but as I mentioned before I do that, I'm gonna stop into the facilities here to clean up and towel off a little bit. Well, fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this video and you're wondering, Chris, I don't know, LAX looks quite nice. Why do people hate it other than those tunnels? Uh, you might enjoy checking out this video right here about why everyone hates LAX airport. Or if you're coming to LA, you might enjoy my travel guide about everything you need to know before you come to Los Angeles. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of those videos.